the three Gary Debs. It may have been a comedy or it may have been a tragedy. It cost one man his reason, it cost me a bloodletting, and it cost yet another man the penalties of the law. Yet there was certainly an element of comedy. Well, you shall judge for yourselves. I remember the date very well, for it was in the same month that Holmes refused a knighthood for services which may perhaps some day be described. I only refer to the matter in passing, for in my position of partner and confidant, I am obliged to be particularly careful to avoid any indiscretion. I repeat, however, that this enables me to fix the date, which was the latter end of June 1902, shortly after the conclusion of the South African War. Holmes had spent several days in bed, as was his habit from time to time, but he emerged that morning with a long fool's cap document in his hand and a twinkle of amusement in his austere grey eyes. There is a chance for you to make some money, friend Watson, said he. Now, have you ever heard the name of Gary Deb? I admitted that I had not. Well, if you can lay your hand upon a Gary Deb, there's money in it. Why? Ah, that's a long story, rather a whimsical one, too. I don't think in all our explorations of human complexities we have ever come upon anything more singular. The fellow will be here presently for cross-examination, so I won't open the matter up till he comes. But meanwhile, that's the name we want. The telephone directory lay on the table beside me, and I turned over the pages in a rather hopeless quest. But to my amazement, there was this strange name in its due place. I gave a cry of triumph. Here you are, Holmes. Here it is. Holmes took the book from my hand. Gary Deb N., he read, 136 Little Ryder Street, West. Sorry to disappoint you, my dear Watson, but this is the man himself. That is the address upon his letter. We want another to match him. 